Hi, I'm Peter Nielsen. And as I sit here in my living room, the word that comes to mind is gratitude. See, I love my life with a passion. I don't take one day for granted. Over the next few minutes, I want to paint you a picture for you not to necessarily to get to know me, but to get to know yourself. I want you to dig so deep, I call it get into your DNA and let your spirit speak to you. See, many of us are programmed to fail. And if you would look at my book and really understand what has transpired in my life, I was programmed to fail. My dad called me a loser. He said I was a mistake. But see, the greatest thing that I know now is that God makes no mistakes. We're all planted with greatness. We all have individual talents. We're all original. We're one of a kind. And when I was very young, I was diagnosed with a disease that had no cure called Crohn's disease. It almost cost me my life twice. First round was in 1977 when I went from 135 pounds down to 86 pounds. At the age of 13 or 14, it devastated me. I was on a pity party. It was like, why me? My whole childhood was just dismantling. I missed a year and a half of school. And see, what I learned also was that fear channeled wrong turns into anger. It's a secondhand emotion. People don't get angry because they want to. People usually get angry because it stems from being frightened of the unknown or feared into something, cornered into something. And my mom and dad were very frightened that they were going to lose their son. And they started to fight and it erupted my dad to become an alcoholic, but a raging alcoholic. And he was very abusive. And here the, the man that I looked up to the most in my life at 12, 13, 14, was hitting and going against my mom. And the last experience I had with my, my earthly father was him chasing my mom, breaking the door down, putting a telephone cord around her neck, trying to take her out. My sister ran out of the apartment building in Brooklyn, New York, and I had a, I'll call it a New York second, and we all do in life. It's that fight or flight. It's that run or go into it head on. And I ended up going against my father. I would never have been able to live with myself if I lost my mom and knew that I didn't try. And in that split moment, I gave him my best shot and my dad released my mom. She came to and she ran out of the apartment and called the police. But I wasn't as fortunate. I was, I was held in that room for a few more moments and he broke my collarbone in three places and gave me six stitches over my eye. I'm reciting that because at that second, my metrics as a human being of trust was broken. There was no drug, there was no medication, there was no therapist that could fix it. And I was on a mission. I was like a train out of control because I was so broken that I thought I would never be able to be put back together. See, but God had a plan, and I didn't even believe in him at the time. A few days later, as my dad was um, actually out of the house, I felt as though that I was causing all this commotion. And here I was diagnosed with Crohn's disease. I was very sick. I was missing a year of school lost a foot of my intestine through the first surgery. And I went to the Verrazano Bridge in Brooklyn, New York. It's where this wonderful bridge just crosses over to the next borough called Staten Island. And it's where the Hudson River meets the Atlantic Ocean. And in one hand, I was screaming at 2 a.m. on a very cold January morning. 
if there is a God, I need help. And in the other hand, I had a razor blade that I was going to take my own life. But in that instant, I heard something so deep inside of me that it stopped me in my tracks. And what I heard was, give me one more day. Give me one more chance. And I thought I was cowardly. And I just skip stoned that razor blade from my dad's razor set into the ocean. And I cried like a baby. See, what I didn't realize was that that's where God met me. He came to me. He knew my, me by name. He knew every single hair on my head. And he made a promise to me, the promise keeper himself. If you believe in me, if you have hope, if you have faith, if you could truly see what you can't see and let me be your eyes, I will lead you. He has never let me down. It's been decades later. And not only has he resurrected my heart to be, have a soft heart, to truly know how to love and to pay it forward. And all I want to do is serve. Show me a person that's got a passion. I'll show you a person living a purpose-filled life. And what I'm here to say to each and every one of you right now is whatever you're going through, whether it's you had just served with divorce papers, you're foreclosing on a home, you've lost a child, you were diagnosed with cancer, you need to take care of the most important thing that you own, and it's your body, it's your temple. And I want to give you just a few practical moves you could use now. You need to get moving. You need to do cardiovascular training at least five out of seven days a week. And I'm not talking about rocket science here. I'm talking about just walking. If you're morbidly obese, get into the pool. It'll take, in waist-high water, 50% of your weight off of your joints if you're recovering from a hip or a back or a knee surgery. You also need to do resistance training so that you could have strength, have more bone density, take care of the most important muscle, your heart, have these things called muscles that will take you with strength through the rest of your life. And you should be doing that every other day, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. We need a 48-hour rest to train the whole body, especially for you beginners. See, this didn't just happen. When God put that seed into me, he planted this seed and he knew exactly the life I was going to have. And all I needed to do was follow those steps. But so many of us, like I mentioned, are programmed to fail because of the past. The enemy is real, and he's here for just one reason, to kill and destroy with disease, with strongholds, with divorce, with bitterness, with guilt, with anger. The only entry point he has is your ear. And what you need to know is that we serve a really faithful Lord. And he has never let me down. The only person, the only thing in this universe that has truly walked and talked what he meant. And I'm here to say to you, are you going around that same block with your health over and over and over again? See, I call what you need, soul strength. And God's, in, he's just planted these seeds and impregnated me with not only my own ministry, but soon to be a series called Soul Strength. And what I mean is that you could have a great marriage now, but if you don't have soul strength, it's gonna crumble. You could have a great body now, but if you don't take care of that one model year that God gives you, it's gonna crumble, it's gonna fail. You need to cross your T's and dot your I's at the breakfast, lunch, and dinner table. You need to have that metrics that only He can give you strength. And when you have that, it's undeniable. It's, it's just unbreakable. So as you're watching me right this moment, what have you done today? We have, in 24 hours, 
86,400 seconds. What are you doing with them? See, in my opinion, God deposits in your love box every single morning when dawn comes over the horizon, 86,400 seconds. And at the end of the night, when you lay your head down on the pillow, if you don't use them, he withdraws that. You can never get it back. Everyone talks about finishing the race strong. Well, to truly finish the race strong, you need to take care of your temple. You need to truly train yourself, not only this way, but train yourself to be godly. That's what soul strength is all about. I mean, God is love and love is real. And who wants to be walking around with a chip on their shoulder all day? I'm going to give you one more example. We always talk about years. I've been doing this for 25 years. You know, um, you know I, I've been, this person's been married for 30 years. Someone's celebrating their 25th birthday. My daughter's 20 years old. My other daughter is 17 years old. We always equate things as a birthday to years. The average person lives 75 to 80 years if you're blessed, if you truly are blessed. How old are you? Well, if you are fortunate and you're going to live to 80 years, that turns out to being 29,200 days. 29,200 days. If you take my age, which is almost a half a century, I have less than 10,000 days left. Hello? We don't get a second chance at this. This is not a dress rehearsal. If you don't exercise, if you don't eat right, if you don't feed the machine, if you don't have that soul strength, you're just going to exist. And in my opinion, you're dead on arrival. If you don't live with a purpose, what are you doing? If you're not in a healthy relationship, why are you staying in it? If you're not truly going to work every day and living a life on something that you love to do, God gives us all gifts. What's the sense of just kind of like putting home, getting on the couch, getting the clicker, and just existing? You need to maximize each and every second, every hour, every year that God gives us. And to do that, we need to put it all together. So my hope for each and every one of you is that you truly find hope in your life again. And many people will ask me, Peter, you always talk about hope. You have a TV show called Principles of Hope. You, you constantly write about it. But to me, I believe that hope is just false hope. But you know what's the interesting thing? If you go to the Webster Dictionary right now and you look up the definition of hope, hope is something that you wish or hope for that will turn into reality. This is not some pie in the sky dream. This is something that you truly believe in. You dig so deep to find your reasons why that you then begin to not only have hope, but you believe and you have faith. When this happens, now all of a sudden, in my opinion, things just happen in such a tremendous way. I always say that we can live weeks without eating. We can live days without drinking water. We can even live minutes without the air that I'm breathing right now. But if you lose hope, you're cooked, you're done. You go into that corner, you crawl up like an embryo, and you give up. The common denominator to everyone that fails is they lose hope and belief in themselves. And what I'm telling you right now is that grab that hope, whatever it is to you. Embrace it. Live under its roof. Don't do life on the sidelines. Because when you have hope and you believe again, and you dig deep, and you find out your reasons why, life is grand. Over 30 years ago, I was diagnosed with Crohn's disease. 
They wrote me out two times. 13 years ago, my heart stopped for 43 seconds. They put a defibrillator on me three times. See, the enemy thought he had me. But I'm going to tell you something. Whatever you're going through, our great author and our wonderful finisher says to me every time that I'm cornered and I'm in the middle of the ocean and I don't see land, he says to me, stick by me. Let me be your partner. Let me help you finish the race strong because it's not over until he says it's over. I wish everybody an incredible year. And let's finish this race strong together.